Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm Kathy Wells, editor of OEM Off Highway Magazine, and welcome to today's webinar, Diesel and Beyond, Unlocking the Future of Fuel Filtration Technology, presented by Aaron Keck and OEM Off Highway Magazine. Today's session is being recorded and will be available on demand this week at OEMOffHighway.com. A couple of tips before we get started. Our presentation today will feature slides with live audio from our presenter. You'll note that your view within the system is customizable, so please feel free to adjust the layout and engage with different windows to meet your viewing preferences. Following today's presentation, we'll begin a live Q&A. Uh, we encourage you to use this Q&A box on your screen to submit your questions for our presenter at any time throughout the presentation, and we'll answer as many of them as possible. This Q&A box is also where you are welcome to contact our team for assistance with any technical issues. And last but not least, uh, please be sure to check out the related content section for some additional information and resources there. Today's webinar is sponsored by Schroeder Industries and will delve into the dynamic landscape of future energy solutions and explore cutting edge advancements in fuel filtration technology. Schroeder Industries is a family company of 76 years that manufactures, designs, and markets a complete range of advanced fluid conditioning solutions. Today's presenter is Aaron Keck, Product Manager for the Fuel Products and Systems Group at Schroeder Industries. Aaron holds a degree in architectural engineering with a minor in off-highway equipment from Penn State University. Uh, first of all, thank you all for being here with us today. And now let's officially hand over the controls to Aaron to begin the presentation and tell us a little bit more about himself. Aaron, the floor is yours. Great, thank you, Kathy. I appreciate everybody's time this morning, uh, today, depending upon where you're at this afternoon. Uh, first, thank you for taking the time out of your day to join us in learning about the future of fuel filtration technology. Uh, to get things started, I would like to introduce you a little bit more to who Schroeder Industries is and who I am as a person. Um, I think it's helpful to know who your presenter is. And in this case, Schroeder Industries, uh, as Kathy had explained, is a global leader of engineered fluid conditioning products and services. Now, with our headquarters in Leedsdale, Pennsylvania, just outside of Pittsburgh, and our element production facility in Cumberland, Maryland, I'm proud to be a part of a company that roots its design and manufacturing within the United States. So proudly manufactured in the United States uh, is one thing that we uh, are excited to share. Now, as your presenter, um, and Kathy had mentioned, my name is Aaron Keck, and I'm a product manager for fuel filtration products and systems at Schroeder Industries. And I've been with Schroeder Industries for more than eight years and part of the fuel filtration group as uh, part of that eight years. I have over 13 years of experience within the diesel power and fluid power industries and a, a proud engineering graduate from Penn State. Now, along with other product support staff here at Schroeder Industries, uh, we all typically complete our CFPHS, so our Certified Fluid Power Hydraulic Specialists. That way you're dealing with industry experts. And uh, outside of work, I enjoy spending time in the outdoors and at the cart track with my wife and two children when I'm not at work. Now enough about me, more about what we're here to talk about. Now bear with me for a second, but I'm gonna start the conversation with cash. Who doesn't like cash? In general, it's a form of currency we've grown familiar with, from some of our earliest memories of getting that cash on our birthday cards to the cash used to pay for our coffee on the way into work. Now, electronic banking, uh, when the days of writing and depositing checks at brick and mortar banks were replaced with a scan on your phone deposits and those countless web retail purchases that I know we're all guilty of, we have all seen the conveniences and impact of a cashless world. Um, no, I know I'm going to bring up some confusion or controversy, but how about cryptocurrency? Many of us shifting in our seats, a little uncomfortable, all of us with a wide range of opinions and preferences on what cryptocurrency is and how it's used in the world today. Now, no matter our stance on the use of cryptocurrency, this has had a massive impact on how money is exchanged globally. So all this said, the whole purpose of this exercise is to express that advancing technology has enabled new ways of exchanging currency, but it wasn't a clear cut direct path. While many of us envision advancement in a linear process, it doesn't accurately represent 
what has happened in the world around us. Rather, we see various levels of adoption, advancement, and things like that in economies globally. Now, it's clear that there's no single solution that works for everyone, nor a clear line where one stops and the other ends. While some prefer to buy their morning coffee with cash, others, like myself on occasion, can live an entire day without a single paper dollar in our pockets. Similarly, the advances and changes in the energy industry parallel this scenario almost perfectly. When we position ourselves within the filtration industry, we have to keep our finger on the pulse of how sources and uses of energy change, which ultimately drive where our focus of fuel filtration development efforts occur. Now, we have been taking cues from industry experts or drawing the same conclusions, and that is that while there is a great need to progress and innovate to develop cleaner and environmentally responsible energy sources, we must do so in parallel with continuing to make advancements in traditional internal combustion technologies. And we find ourselves in a position where the industry is needed to provide the solutions to protect all aspects of energy production and consumption while staying ahead of the ever-changing technology advancements. So for the purpose of today's webinar, we're gonna focus on three key areas that prove to balance the short and long-term energy demands and how filtration is advancing to meet those needs. So first, let's take a look at what the future holds for the diesel engine. The 2023 Con Expo in Las Vegas proved to be a great opportunity to see how much the off-highway equipment industry is moving towards electrification and e-mobility. On the screen, you can see Volvo construction equipment was one example of a manufacturer launching an entire offering of battery electric equipment, which largely stems from the European regulations driving change in construction equipment. Heavy is an example of a US-based manufacturer of heavy equipment that is seeking to electrify the industry Uh, from a location in New Jersey with a full electric product line. So what does the future of the diesel engine look like? I find it exciting to see renewable energy continue to take hold as as technology advances. The continued adoption of this technology helps to pioneer the transition away from the status quo and move us towards new ways of doing things. You know, if we rephrase Doc Brown from Back to the Future, The message starts to sound like diesel, where we're going, we don't need diesel. But let's step back from the excitement of surrounding uh, electrification and e-mobility and that push towards the future. We find many industry sources saying that the diesel engine is here to stay. From the military to the commercial and industrial sector, the message is that there is still a long road ahead for the diesel engine. Energy density and infrastructure are two of the gaps in technology needed to meet the current and growing demand and to be able to do so consistently and reliably. There's no doubt that there's still demand to further optimize the diesel engine design, to further downsize and reduce the emissions, ultimately what we're all looking to accomplish. So how are we going to accomplish this? Well, today, A large part of the continued advancements in diesel diesel technology, excuse me, are in applications where energy requirements are quite high, where power may be required in remote locations or as a reliable primary or backup power source for critical operations, processes, or even services. Now, power generation is an area where the diesel engine is widely used, and it's largely for its reliability and cost to operate. Now, it's often integrated as the sole source of backup power generation or we're seeing as part of a hybrid or microgrid solution where demand may not necessarily overlap with times of renewable power generation like solar or wind or where there are limitations to the amount of battery storage available. Similarly, mining operations require a a constant movement of infrastructure, overburden, and payload. So there's a lot of material, heavy material, to move in that process. 
To do so efficiently and reliably, the diesel engine continues to be a widely used source of power for mobile and stationary equipment alike. We also see that in the oil and gas well site operations, diesel engines are the primary choice for hydraulic fracturing, or as many of us know it, fracking operations for their sheer power and portability. In this application, we see where there are changes taking place to reduce the environmental impact through carbon footprint reduction. And this will transition us towards the topic of alternative fuel sources, which we'll cover in a minute, and their ability to supplement what is used or what used to be a diesel engine only operation. So when we talk about sensitive fuel system designs and the engine technology drivers, it's important to understand how the underlying filtration technology is advancing to play a key role through the changes in diesel fuel systems. During a variety of development projects here at Schroeder Industries, we were able to apply filtration technology advancements to aid in the continued use of the diesel engine. By using the latest synthetic and microfiber glass filtration media, as well as further developing coalescing filtration technology, we've been able to protect sensitive fuel system components to ensure reliability and efficiency under these challenging application conditions. Now, it's important to understand that in this case, we also see a change in fuel chemistry. Changing fuel chemistry resulting from the advances in biological and renewable fuel sources require a careful selection of materials, especially for chemical compatibility. The choice of appropriate metals, coatings, and elastomers ensure that the filtration will function without fail as the chemistry of the fuel changes. Now these advances in technology and fuel chemistry are occurring on what seems like a day-to-day -day basis. So by using 3D printing and modular test equipment, we can accel accelerate the prototyping and validation steps. Now, as the filtration industry advances, these increasingly rapid changes aren't effective without repeatable results. Through a quality mindset and company culture, carefully designed manufacturing equipment and a focus on lean manufacturing processes. These are the things that allow the filtration industry to develop filtration solutions that contribute to the rapid advancement of the diesel engine today. So while advancements in diesel engine technology continue, we need to consider diversifying our sources of fuel to meet the growing global energy demand and continue to reduce emissions. Now I had mentioned earlier that dual fuel systems and fracking operations are an example of the transition into fuel source diversity by designing engines to run on a combination of compressed gas and liquid fuels. Now in October, 2022, in the Outlook for Energy report from ExxonMobil, there was an emphasis on the long-term reduced reliance on oil and shifting demand towards a variety of alternative fuel sources. Now in the report, technology, policy, and consumer preference were the three key drivers of energy demand. Now, alternative fuel sources like natural gas and renewable energy will play a key role over the next 30 years in offsetting trad traditional fuel sources and energy sources like oil while providing more reliable and sustainable energy. Now, within the commercial transportation sector, sector alone, what's shown on the right-hand side of that slide, one of the largest growing sectors of the global energy consumption through 2050. Now, we're expected to see a push towards alternative fuel sources. So while oil will continue to be a large source of global energy demand over the next 30 years, we still see that the shift towards alternative fuel sources is real and it is relevant. If we look at one of the most widely used alternative fuel sources for lower emissions today in the here and now, it would be compressed natural gas or CNG. To provide a sense of where CNG is expected to go, an estimated growth of 83.5% is expected by 2027, so roughly five years from now. The report on the previous slide had also illustrated 
that even from the ExxonMobil experts, that natural gas was expected to grow at nearly the same rate over the next 30 years. So this isn't a flash in the pan five year growth that we expect to see, but a long sustained growth and a path towards alternative fuel sources. This is why we're seeing such a heavy focus on filtration development for compressed gas applications today. Now, when we look at applications that are driving the advancement in CNG filtration technology, we generally start with CNG fueling, especially for commercial fleets. Last mile delivery or hub and spoke distribution models have fleets of light, medium, and even heavy duty trucks returning to the same location every shift or every day. There's a widespread use of CNG as the fuel source in these types of applications to help reduce emissions and carbon footprint. Now with the growth and expansion of fueling infrastructure for CNG fleets, there is a need to ensure a reliable compressor operation while lowering power requirements of compressors and delivering a consistently clean fuel to their fleet in a timely manner. On a larger scale, we see things like virtual pipelines as an option for industry to locate plants and processes farther away from existing natural gas pipeline systems. Now, virtual pipelines use compressors, simply take gas from an existing pipeline, load it onto trailers in a compressed state to be trucked to remote industrial sites to act as a quote unquote virtual pipeline, where the physical pipeline would previously be needed and without it there would prevent that industry from even existing. Now they're often facing the same challenges that fleet fueling compressor stations face. Lastly, we look at dual fuel technology and it is regaining traction within the oil and gas frack pump applications. Now this technology allows fleets to use nearby natural gas to supplement the fuel source of an engine that has been designed to operate on a combination of diesel fuel and compressed gas. Now, by offsetting most of the diesel fuel normally consumed during diesel only equipment operations, this has the impact of reducing emissions by as much as 35% compared to early dual fuel fracking technology. Now, if you look at how filtration has an impact on alternative fuel sources, to drill a little deeper, we can look at two examples. I'll pull virtual pipeline first and filtration for virtual pipeline applications need to maintain low pressure draw. This can help to reduce load on the compressor drive motors, which ultimately reduces the energy consumption of the compressor. Now, a lower pressure drop can also help to extend service intervals, but we also must take great care in maintaining the filtration integrity. In the filtration design, since compressors and the upstream equipment consuming the CNG also need to be protected from particulate, liquid contamination, uh, it has to do so without compromise. By choosing the latest gas filtration media and by using a layered pleated construction, we can provide the benefits of low clean pressure drop while maintaining a high efficiency compared to traditional filtration commonly used in these applications. Now this allows for virtual pipeline networks, in this case, to expand their reach to a greater distance from the existing pipeline infrastructure. And this allows the use of natural gas to expand away from those existing infrastructures. Now filtration for dual fuel frack systems also needs to maintain a very similar low pressure drop but there's a greater focus on a more robust solution designed to withstand the aggressive oil and gas work environment. In this application, the engines are consuming diesel fuel along with compressed natural gas. So space clean needs to be as small as physically possible to accommodate the components re required for two parallel fuel systems. The need to protect the fuel system from particulate and liquid contamination is just as critical as it is in the other applications for system reliability. Now, while there is filtration at the well site to mitigate some of the impurities within the gas, the materials used in the filter element and housing still need to be carefully considered to ensure that reliable operation can take place. 
In many cases, appropriate surface treatments, whether it's an anodization or a plating, and the use of stainless steel materials where possible, prevent degradation in potentially corrosive environments. Now, shifting towards what the future looks like, in the long term, our third key area of focus is going to be looking at the long-term impact of electrification and how that affects filtration industry today. First, we have to take a look at one of the transitional applications when we look at the move towards electrification. Cummins hit the industry with big news at the 2023 Con Expo event, introducing their fuel agnostic 15 liter engine. All this is just one of the several examples of an engine manufacturer adopting hydrogen as a fuel source for familiar internal combustion engines. This illustrates that fuel diversity is an attainable first step in transitioning away from liquid fuel engines and move us closer to the infrastructure needed to support more alternative energy sources like hydrogen. This hydrogen infrastructure will then only help to further expand fuel cell electric applications. So first, what is fuel cell electric? A fuel cell, just to simplify it, is an electrochemical cell that converts chemical energy into electricity. So today, they most commonly use hydrogen for the fuel and ambient air for the source of oxygen for what's known as the redox reaction to take place so that electricity can be generated. For fuel cells, fuel cells can be used for both stationary and mobile power generation. So it can be used as something like a remote generator much like an internal combustion engine gen set is used today. Now it can also be used to provide power along with some electrical storage system like a battery system or a capacitor system for vehicles or mobile equipment. So some of the hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicles that we see on the highway today use this technology. When we look at the fuel cell itself, we need to consider that cleanliness is critical to its performance and its longevity. In application, air quality can be a source of contamination that can damage the sensitive components of the fuel cell. A whole host of contaminants can be breathed into the fuel cell using that ambient air, which can render the fuel cell ineffective, if not appropriately filtered and conditioned. Also, the cleanliness of the hydrogen as the fuel source can contribute to the performance and the life of the fuel cell. So appropriate filtration for the hydrogen is just as important. Now with fuel cell electric technology in mind, we need to consider the widespread use for this type of technology and the infrastructure needed to support this type of power generation. It starts with generating the hydrogen needed to run the fuel cell. From the electrolysis process needed to produce the hydrogen to the compression and storage of the hydrogen, the same requirements of removing contaminants during the handling and the storage of the fuel parallel that of compressed gas that we're familiar with today. The refueling points also require a level of filtration to ensure that hydrogen introduced into the fuel cells maintains a high purity. The stationary equipment used to charge battery electric equipment or fuel cell electric equipment use some level of filtration for both the air used in the fuel cell as well as hydrogen fuel being consumed. Lastly, filtration plays a key role in the manufacturing process. Sometimes we don't always think about as component cleanliness of the fuel cells, the battery technology, and the compressed gas storage tanks really requires extremely clean environments to ensure safe and reliable operation in the field. So filtration for hydrogen while similar in concept to other compressed gases like the CNG we had just talked about, it requires a careful attention to the materials used to manufacture the housings and the filter vessels, as well as the filtration media itself. Now, a, a concept, hydrogen embrittlement, is the deterioration of solid metals due to the presence of hydrogen. Now, this can cause cracks to form in materials that we would generally consider acceptable for other liquid and compressed gas applications. But hydrogen is unique. 
Hydrogen is an exceptionally small molecule as well. So seal designs need to be carefully selected and appropriate elastomers used to ensure a consistent, leak-free, and serviceable sealing surface. Now, when capturing contaminants, traditional filter medias used for other liquids and gases will not withstand the design requirements of hydrogen compression, transfer, storage, and even dispensing. In many cases, stainless steel is used for the filter element construction, and this helps to avoid electrostatic discharge. The media is commonly constructed of compressed metal fibers, which ensure that the media fibers do not migrate downstream of the filter and provide the filtration efficiencies needed for the sensitive high pressure hydrogen system components. Now the filtration for hydrogen systems truly is the cutting edge of filtration technology today. It's where we will continue to push the limits of filtration and material sciences. So as we come to the end of our exploration into the future of fuel filtration, we've seen how existing diesel technology, alternative fuels, and the movement towards electrification are all still greatly impacted by innovations in filtration technology. It is not one single solution to solve global energy requirements, both now and in the future. We need to look at a multifaceted approach in which filtration can continue to push the limits of design and materials to solve the ever complex cleanliness requirements of fuels in our future. I would like to leave the group today uh, with a quote from Henry Ford. Now he had said, coming together is the beginning, keeping together is progress, working together is success. Continued developments are needed in areas like diesel and internal combustion engine technology, filtration media development, energy exploration and extraction, battery technologies, energy infrastructure, and material sciences for fuel, further fuel cell advancements. And that's only naming a few of the disciplines, industries, and sciences that we need to continue to develop. As I've shared in today's webinar, filtration technology is just one of the many pieces which will continue to provide for the future of the off-highway equipment industry and beyond. So again, uh, I would like to thank everyone for your time and interest in today's webinar about the future of fuel filtration. If you'd like to know more about the advancements in fuel filtration and the many fluid conditioning solutions that Schroeder Industries has to offer, please visit our website at schroederindustries.com, follow us on LinkedIn, and subscribe to the latest video content at our Schroeder Industries channel on YouTube. So with that, I will turn the floor back over to Kathy um, so we can step into the Q&A session. Jumping back in here. Hey, everybody. Okay. First of all, thank you, Aaron. Fantastic information here. And I know it's got our audience's wheels turning. Uh, it looks like we have several questions coming in. So at this time, I'd like to begin the Q&A session. Uh, attendees, if you haven't submitted your question yet, please don't be shy. Load us up. We would love to know what's on your mind. Um, and now, Aaron, if you're ready, we're just going to dive right in. Uh, so please, first let's up, go ahead. Yeah, sure thing. Uh, first up, uh, let's ask or let's answer how realistic is the transition to battery electric construction equipment? You know, it's a fair question. Uh, we've seen battery electric technologies. I mean, electric vehicles have been around since the early 1800s, uh, some of the earliest reports. And in those cases, EV automotive designs have had their starts and stops. While we've made great strides in technologies for efficient motors and energy storage, it doesn't mean that we will see a 100% conversion to this technology. So I, I think in general, um, it is still something that we can look at in pieces and parts uh, to fit the right application, but it's not gonna be uh, the, the silver bullet to solve the energy problem today. Good answer. Um, let's, let's tackle our next question. Next we have, um, okay, this attendee says, while you had talked about natural gas, what about propane, biogas, or landfill gas? Absolutely. Uh, so when it comes to any sort of gas source, whether it is propane, biogas, uh, landfill gases that we're typically seeing, uh, those are commonly handled similar to natural gas. 
They're going to have a few more contaminants. They're going to have some other chemicals that we just have to look at materials of construction and sealing. But overall, we're going to treat those very similar to compressed gas. And um, it's nice to see where biofuel sources, renewable sources, are just taking advantage of energy that is available, most commonly at landfills or in areas of agriculture. Great, cool, okay. Um, let's bring up one more. Um, uh, let's, let's, first of all, let's rewind a bit. Okay, so what, what is the virtual pipeline you talked about? Can you revisit that, explain a little bit more? Sure. Um, you know, as I was pulling together the information uh, and as we've been talking within our company about applications for compressed gas, virtual pipelines was one of those market areas applications that was new and unique to us. And it is just simply an area for transporting gas where an existing natural gas pipeline or infrastructure doesn't already exist. So it's really neat that industrial processes can move more inland or away from the East Coast where there's a large natural gas pipeline infrastructure. So it's just neat to see how that footprint allows us to expand by using compressor technology and what we're already seeing and using today, just any unique application. Okay, cool. Uh, let's grab another question. Do you think the long-term, oops, excuse me, I lost my place. Do you think the long-term direction uh, will be fuel cell, fuel cell electric vehicles or battery electric vehicles? No, it's, it's a fair question. I think, you know, I hate to be wishy-washy, but we're gonna see a little bit of both. It's not going to be a strict transition to battery electric. In cases where you've got urban construction going on, we've already seen the widespread use of battery electric, but the challenge is how do you charge uh, construction equipment like that when an infrastructure doesn't exist. That's where fuel cell electric uh, gen sets and things like that will be the path forward, um, kind of the two working hand in hand uh, to expand that energy diversity. Awesome. Um, all right, we've got one more. Uh, we've got a couple more questions, but please keep them coming, guys, if you have them. Uh, what about HVO fuels? HVO. Um, so those fuels we are um, commonly seeing a lot of inquiries for. And in many cases, um, those hydrogenated uh, vegetable oils are ones that they perform typically along the lines of a very clean, pure diesel fuel. So when it comes to sealing technologies, filtration technologies, we find that many of the same existing filter medias, um, housing, uh, materials and metals and sealing elastomers are going to be directly compatible with HVO fuels. Awesome. And this looks like our last question, unless we see some fly in at the last second here. Um, what do you have to take into consideration when sealing hydrogen filters compared to other media like oil? Absolutely. Um, during the presentation, I made a comment about how small the molecule is of hydrogen compared to long hydrocarbon chains like we're dealing with uh, when it comes to diesel fuel or hydraulic fluids. And these fluids and oils um, usually seal very easily. Hydrogen being much smaller, we have to be careful. Usually you're seeing um, double seal designs. You're using tighter compression on the O-rings and seals uh, and a number of other considerations. So uh, if there is some specific details or questions um, about the housing design or the ceiling that's needed to be done, uh, we'd be interested in you know, taking that discussion offline and talking a little bit further about that specific application. Awesome, I appreciate you offering that. Uh, oh, no but, problem. Okay. It, it looks like that's all we have for questions, uh, which brings our webinar to a close. Um, I'd like to thank our presenter, Aaron Keck, for his awesome insights and expertise here today. Uh, attendees, you'll be receiving an email from us soon with access to today's playback and presentation, but please also feel free to visit oemoffhighway.com to check out more on fuel filtration technology and browse other topics in our bank of educational webinars. Uh, thanks again to our speaker, Aaron Keck, and thank you all for taking the time to join us. Uh, this concludes today's program. Thank you, Kathy. I appreciate your time and thank you everyone for your attendance.